Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing how to have a healthy relationship with social media. I provide audio coaching for breakup recovery, trying to get an ex back, attracting someone new and life coaching. Visit www.dateme.tips for more details. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing how to have a healthy relationship with social media. Using social media can have many benefits, but just as many downsides. In today's podcast, we will discuss how to have a healthy relationship with social media, both from the perspective of using the apps, but also within a romantic relationship. So let's get straight into this. And point number one is reduce use within a relationship. So if you use social media a lot and then get into a new romantic relationship, I would suggest that you spend less time on social media. I would suggest that you reduce the amount of time you are using these apps. And this is for a couple of main reasons. The first of which, you need to be putting your energy into your new romantic relationship. And for every minute and let alone every hour that you spend on social media, you could be putting that time into building your connection. Now, depending on how you use social media will dictate into what degree I suggest you reduce using it. If you use social media for your work, for instance, then of course you are going to have to continue using social media apps to get on with your work life and your business. However, I'm actually talking about personal use within social media. The time you are using when you don't have to use it. If you don't have to be on an app, but you decide to go on an app, that is what I'm talking about reducing. Personally, I believe that social media apps are best used for single people anyway. Social media is an opportunity to get to know new people, as well as maintaining connections that you have within the virtual world. If you're single then you are likely to have more time to forge new connections online, to speak about things with different people, to keep connections alive that you have with people you know in real life, but perhaps you now live further apart and you talk online via these apps. But I would say that once you get into a new romantic relationship, you can still maintain those friendships that you have from afar via messaging apps. You can use those apps But I'm talking about reducing the amount of time that you spend on the threads, on the comments, on the statuses, all of those types of things. You don't need to be focusing additional time speaking to people you don't really know on these applications. When you've got a new relationship and you want to be putting your energy, your mind, body and soul into this. Additionally, this can cause your relationship difficulties. If you're spending time speaking to different people about different things, there can be misunderstandings sometimes. And this isn't me saying that you can't do your own thing, because I definitely believe that two people need to remain individuals within a romantic relationship. However, if you are commenting on lots of people's statuses that you don't know, and maybe your partner thinks, for instance, that you're flirting, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, These are the types of things that you don't need to be getting involved with. You don't need the drama. You don't need the stress. You also don't need people, again, people that you don't really know very well, causing you problems by misconstruing something that you want to say, something you want to get across, and ultimately causing you problems that you don't need in your life. Lots of people on social media post photos and videos of themselves. Again, I would suggest that this is a single person's game. If you're single and you're trying to promote yourself, because ultimately social media is in essence PR, you know, you're trying to promote yourself in the best possible way. And that is best done when you're single, where you can potentially meet somebody new. Even if you're not using it as a dating app per se, it can definitely be used in that regard. Once you have a new relationship, once you're spending time with your new partner, 
You don't need to be updating your social media apps with every single new photo you take of yourself and of your family. If you've got together with somebody new and you take a photo of you both and put it online, you might want to check if they're okay with this. Maybe they are, but perhaps they aren't. You need to respect people's privacy. So I would say in essence, if you get into a new romantic relationship, you should be reducing the time you are using social media for personal reasons. I don't believe it's a good use of your time when you have a new partner. Again, this isn't about your work life. This is about personal social media usage and reducing that time. You don't have to remove yourself completely from these apps, but I'm just saying reduce the time that you spend on them. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast about how to have a healthy relationship with social media. And point number two is social media is biased. Social media is biased. You know, you can place yourself within echo chambers, whether these are positive or negative. You can hear the voices that you want to hear and not the voices that you don't. And you might think to yourself, well, that's a good idea because I only want to hear people who have an opinion similar to myself. That's all well and good some of the time, but if you do it consistently and constantly, that is where sometimes you can get lost, okay? Because social media is biased. Social media shows you what other people want you to see. Now, you can use this to your own advantage. If you want to come across as the best version of yourself, you can promote yourself successfully on social media by posting photos of you looking your best, your healthiest, doing activities which show you to be ambitious, energized, and living life. You know, these types of things show you love life. They show that you are a positive person. There is nothing wrong with promoting yourself positively on social media as long as you aren't doing it in a way which is fake. As long as what you are promoting is accurate, then absolutely showcase your best self. But remember that everybody else is doing the same. Therefore, social media is biased. They show you what they want you to see and you can show them what you want them to see. Now, as I said earlier, if you are in a romantic relationship, I don't suggest you do this too much at all anyway. But let's just say you're single. Maybe you've just come out of a relationship and you're now single. Maybe you've gone through a breakup and you want to try to get your ex back. In this instance, you absolutely want to be promoting yourself in the best way. Only post photos where you look your best. Don't post a photo where you don't look that great. Now, I'm not saying use filters. I'm just saying that if you post a photo, make sure you are happy with what is seen. Sometimes people post every single photo they have of themselves and they're not necessarily that flattering. That isn't being fake. It's just about being selective with what you're showcasing because everybody else is doing the same. That's why it's so important not to get trapped in the cycle of trying to judge yourself against other people online, but it's not necessarily real. I'm telling you not to use filters because I don't believe it's helpful or ethical, but that doesn't mean other people aren't using filters. That doesn't mean other people aren't photoshopping their pics. You've got to understand what you see isn't necessarily real. And certainly, even if it is real, it is selective. Use this to your advantage. Make sure that you are selective, but truthful with what you post. If you want to put something online, make sure you're putting something which is worthwhile and genuine. Don't put online things that you might regret in the future. Don't have arguments. Don't post when you're not feeling great. If you're feeling angry, frustrated or bitter, you need time out. Posting sad song lyrics online is not going to help you in trying to seem an attractive person. If you want to try to get your ex back, if you want to try to attract somebody new, then coming across as negative and upset is not going to help you. If you feel negative and upset, speak with your friends and family. Go and see a local doctor. Speak to real people. Don't post this stuff online. And if you're about to put something online and you know deep down that this might not be a great idea, pause. Think about it. Turn off your phone, your laptop, your computer. Don't post it. Think about before you upload. Whatever you type, whatever you send, whatever you post, you need to be doing this with a stable mind. If you don't feel stable minded, do not 
post on social media. Social media is biased. Use it to your advantage, but make sure you remember that other people are using it to their advantage. So be wary with what you see and definitely don't judge yourself against what you see online. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast about how to have a healthy relationship with social media. And point number three is don't confuse fantasy with reality. So just before we delve into point number three, I just want to say that if you would like life coaching support, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service where me and you can speak one-on-one about your specific situation. Maybe it is regarding dating and relationships, potentially a breakup. Maybe it's you trying to focus on living your best life, improving your chances of doing the very best you can in whatever goal you have at the moment. Whatever your life goals are, whatever situation you are in, if you need a life coach, then you may want to consider speaking with me where I can become your coach and your teammate. Go to my website, www.dateme.tips, for more information on my audio coaching service. So point number three is don't confuse fantasy with reality. Now, we've already touched upon how social media is biased. And that is something to really consider when I'm talking about point number three, where people can get lost in the fantasy of social media. People can build strong connections with people they've never met. Now, that's not to say that everybody online is a bad guy, but you have to be wary. You don't know if you're speaking to a catfish. Whether they are a catfish in a romantic sense, maybe they're trying to scam you, all of these things and more unfortunately pop up on social media. Don't confuse fantasy with reality. A friend that you have in person, in my opinion, is much more valuable than a friend you have never met and you've only spoke to via comments on social media. So I'm not here to say that it's impossible to find a good person online, of course that's not the case. However, If you believe that your main friends are people that you have not only never met, but never actually physically seen or heard in any way, shape or form, and you're only having conversations online via text, via comments, I would be very, very wary with slipping into that fantasy. The reality of life is so much more important, and therefore I suggest you get out into the world, joining new classes, groups and clubs to make new connections, and more real life friendships. Along with this, of course, is the potential possibility of meeting a new romantic partner. And even though online dating is a fantastic way to meet new people, when you're online dating, you are going to be aiming to meet that person ASAP. You know, you have a few conversations, yes, but within a week or two of chatting, if you're getting on, you need to be arranging to meet. It's not ideal to speak to somebody that you never hear, see on video call, let alone see in real life. It's not ideal to be doing that for months and months and months. You need that feeling of reality. So if you're online dating, I would suggest that within a couple of weeks, you should be aiming to meet somebody in a safe public setting so you can really figure out whether they match the person you're talking to, making sure they're not a catfish. Now remember that friendships can be just as big a catfish as romantic relationships. And therefore, if your friendship group is purely online, you've never met them, you only speak in comments, please consider trying to build a real life friendship group where you know who you are talking to are real. Social media can be great for so many things. You can promote yourself, you can showcase your best self, you can find a romantic option, you can get a job, you can make friends, you can discuss your favorite hobbies and interests. It's all great when it is safe and when it is true. But you have to recognise that fantasy sometimes is not reality. Making sure that you don't get confused between the two. If you're online, if you're on social media, please be wary of people you have never met in real life. If you know somebody in real life and you speak to them online, that's absolutely fine. Spend as much of your time in the real world as possible. If you believe that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description.